Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Ruz Beshad. This is the sixth part of the series on how to develop a software application. In this part, I'll talk a little bit about Blazor and then show you how to turn our web UI into a Blazor type application. So let's get started. What is Blazor? The name Blazor has gotten from Browser and Razor. The latter is an ASP.NET programming syntax used to create dynamic web pages with the c -sharp or VB.NET programming languages. From its introduction page, Blazor is a web framework developed for building interactive client-side web UI with .NET. It enables developers to create web applications using c -sharp and HTML without having to use or write JavaScript code. Blazor is a single-page application development framework. That means it interacts with the user by dynamically rewriting the current web page with new data from the web server, instead of the default method of a web browser, which is loading entire new pages. Blazor apps are based on Razor components. Razor components, or simply components, are c -sharp classes written in the form of a Razor markup page with a Razor file extension. So, the content of components in a Blazor application is a mix of HTML markup and c -sharp code. There are two Blazor hosting models. Blazor WebAssembly, also called Client-Side Blazor, which we can simply say it provides a way to run .NET and c -sharp in a browser. This model is divided into two categories. Blazor WebAssembly standalone. This type of Blazor application works alone. It doesn't have any server side connection to get data from or send data to. It works offline. And the second category is Blazor WebAssembly hosted on ASP.NET Core. This type of Blazor application is similar to the previous one. That is, it can work offline until it needs data from server. At this time, it connects to the ASP.NET Core Server application over a Signal Arc connection or using Web API call. The second hosting model is Blazor Server, also called Server Side Blazor, which runs client logic on the server and reflects the result to the browser over a Signal Arc connection. Now let's look at each of these models in more detail. The following image will help you better understand how Blazor WebAssembly model works. In this model, .NET assemblies get generated by compiling Razor components. The assemblies are downloaded to the browser along with their dependencies, if any, plus the .NET runtime. Blazor WebAssembly bootstraps the .NET runtime, loads the assemblies for execution, and uses JavaScript interop to handle DOM manipulation and browser API calls. But what is the WebAssembly? According to the MDN documentation, WebAssembly is a new type of code that can be run in modern browsers. It's a low-level assembly-like language with a compact binary format that runs with near-native performance and provides languages such as C, C++, and C Sharp with a compilation target so that they can run on the web. It's also designed to run alongside JavaScript, allowing both to work together. WebAssembly has huge implications for the web platform. It provides a way to run code written in multiple languages on the web at near native speed, with client applications running on the web that previously couldn't have done so. WebAssembly is an open web standard and supported by all major browsers without plugins. This is one major difference with Silverlight. The Blazor server model has been illustrated in the following image. The application c -sharp code is executed by the .NET runtime on the server. UI events are sent from the browser to the server using SignalR which is a real-time messaging framework. The UI updates are applied to the rendered component and sent back by the server. 
each of these models has its own pros and cons. Some of the pros of Blazor WebAssembly are as the following. Easy deployment. This type of Blazor application runs in the browser and doesn't rely on any server-side interaction, so it can easily be deployed to a web server. Offline capability. Blazor WebAssembly can work offline. When the network connection to the server is lost, the client application can continue to function. Obviously, it won't be able to talk to the server to retrieve new data. Consumes less server resources. Because all the code and logic resides and runs in the browser on the client side, so the server load is significantly reduced. Some of the cons of Blazor WebAssembly are Big download size because all required .NET assemblies and their dependencies plus .NET runtime get downloaded to the browser. And as a result, slower startup time, but subsequent startup times are much faster. Limited debugging capabilities. Currently, WebAssembly support for debugging is limited. Limited to the modern browsers, only modern web browsers support WebAssembly. Some of the pros of Blazor Server are as the following. Smaller download size, faster startup time, easier debugging, older browsers friendly. Some of the cons of Blazor Server are no offline capability. It doesn't work in offline mode. That means there should be a connection to the server. More server resources required. The server keeps in memory session per user to preserve user state. That means the server needs more memory. Also, the server is responsible to do all the work for clients, like executing code. So in a large scale, it costs at CPU usage. It's not worthy that both project models have the same framework. So if you configure each type of project model properly, you will be able to convert one to another with a minimal changes. Therefore, in the development process, you can use Blazor Server app model to take its advantages like easily debugging your code and when the development is complete, you can convert it to the Blazor WebAssembly model. Why Blazor? Blazor is an evolving framework that will allow you to write client-side processes using c -sharp. According to the Microsoft documentation, Blazor offers the following advantages. Write code in c -sharp instead of JavaScript. Of course, this is so good for .NET, especially c -sharp developers. Leverage the existing .NET ecosystem of .NET libraries. Share app logic across server and client. Benefit from .NET's performance, reliability, and security. Stay productive with Visual Studio on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Build on a common set of languages, frameworks, and tools that are stable, feature-rich, and easy to use. Now, let's go to our VS solution and see how to convert our web UI to a Blazor app. You may remember that we created Northwind.web project as our presentation layer when I explained multi-layered architectural pattern tutorial. Now, I want to turn it into a Blazor web assembly app. Since we haven't done anything in this project yet, we could delete it and instead create a new Blazor web assembly from scratch. But I'd like to show you how to convert an existing ASP.NET Core Razor Pages project to a Blazor web assembly type because it's a useful and instructive lesson. So let's start with the project file. Open it in edit mode. First of all, change the SDK attribute from web to Blazor Web Assembly, as it's going to be a Blazor Web Assembly app. 
Next, remove this element from the property group. It was added to the project because at the time of creation, we chose enable Razer runtime compilation option. Also replace this package in the item group with these packages that are required for a Blazor web assembly app. Now save the project file by pressing Ctrl S and close it. Now open the launch settings in the properties folder. I talked about this file in my previous video. You need to add this property to each profile in this file. This property enables the IDE to detect that the app is a Blazor web assembly and instructs the script debugging infrastructure to connect to the browser through Blazor's debugging proxy. Also remove this environmental variable from both profiles because they are irrelevant to this type of project. The next step is to replace the www root content with the content from a Blazor app. Because we haven't made any changes to this folder, we can simply and safely delete its content and copy all the files and folders from a new Blazor app. I've already prepared such a stuff and we can do that by a simple copy and paste. Do the similar action for the pages folder. Now, you need to add the shared folder to the project. So, this time copy the whole shared folder and paste it to the project, that is northwind.web. The final step is to replace all the remaining files under the project with the files from a Blazor app. So, delete them first and then copy and paste files from the Blazor app. Note that if you follow the way that is illustrated in this video, be careful that the stuff should be borrowed from a Blazor project with exactly the same name, that is northwind.web. Otherwise, you most likely experience some issues when running your project. Now, build the project and run it to make sure everything works fine. Cool. I'll talk about each file and component in the Blazor app in future videos as we complete it. In the next video, I'll show you how to consume our REST API and build up our first UI page for categories. That's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions regarding the content of the videos, I'd be happy to discuss it with you in the comment sections. If you like this video, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video soon.